All right, this is Daniel uh, Cervantes from Fishing Adventure Gamer. I'm here with Eric from Hello, Sky Kingdom Games. Sky Kingdom Games, that's right. And we're going to take a look at Stonebound Saga. This was on my radar and I finally found it. So, can you explain? Absolutely. So, the Stonebound Saga is a skirmish game with resource management built in. It is two to six players and it plays 45 minutes to an hour. And it has 70 different characters. It was built for competitive play, so there's a ton of options and replayability in it. Each turn, after you pick a team from those 70 characters, you're going to be drawing these cards called Speaking Stones. These act as your resources in the game, and they fuel the abilities that each character has. The okay. objective in the game is to bring your opponent's character's health from 20 down to zero to win. Okay. And some unique aspects of the resource management with these cards is, you'll see on this dashboard here, it uses these pegs. For the any time I want to activate a defensive ability, I put one of these pegs in, I pay the cost, and now these cards actually count against my hand size. So there's a trade-off. How much do I want to dedicate against my hand for defense, and how much do I want to leave in my hand for offense? Okay. Between that hand balancing, and then the unit positioning, and the tactical gameplay, there's a lot of strategy involved. Okay. And so you mentioned on Board Game Geek, I think at Origins, that, at least I think it was Origins, that this was originally supposed to be a miniatures game, right? It was going to be a miniatures game. Yeah. It actually started as a miniatures game, uh, a war gaming. And over time, the team just decided that the card style would be better suited for this, especially with the sheer number of characters. Mm -hmm. It was also going to be a trading card game when we originally launched on Kickstarter. And the community was like, absolutely not. Yep. Let's make it all in the box inclusive. And it also used to be paper and pen, like a traditional miniatures game. Okay. Very old school. So between the feedback of getting everything in the box and then changing these uh, dynamic character dashboards, it was a real improvement for the game. Okay, so how does placement work? So everything is orthogonal, movement and attacking. So if I have a character like Gideon, for example, here, he has a movement of four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Same thing with attack range. Everything's orthogonal. So if he has an attack range of one, it's going to be one, two, three, four. Diagonal would be two. So how do you know what his range is? So you'll take a look at a character card here. Let's see if we got it in the camera here. The yep. top right corner is their character class. And if you take a look at a character dashboard and match it here, it tells you what their starting stats are. Okay. That's what you'll be setting on the dashboard. So I know that a Marauder has a movement of four. It's actually the highest movement in the game. Marauders are like a glass cannon. They can rush in, do big damage, but they're very weak as well. Okay. So how do you know it's a Marauder? So the top right Oh, the symbols, right I got here, it. Okay. And then you match it right here. So at the start of the game, after you pick your characters, you're setting your starting stats. Okay. After you set those starting stats, you take their character ability cards to cover up those stats gotcha. once the game begins. Both characters start on the opposite side of the field, and they're going towards each other. Okay. So, so you've got usually around two to three turns before you're actually in so combat. You have time to prepare. You've got time to fuse those defensive abilities or even stay back. There's a lot of characters that can volley arrows across the field, for example. Okay. Or even swap places with other characters on the board. A lot of different shenanigans like that. So, so can you swap places with the opponent? Yes. There's okay. actually a couple different characters that can do that. So. Sweet. Lots of different strategic options. Okay. So when combat works, do you yep. roll dice? I take it because I see dice on yeah. the board. The dice are really for bonus effects. So if I get, for example, let's use Gideon again. If I were going to attack Leah here, if he gets in a range, if I didn't have the special resource cards to use his special abilities, I can always do a standard attack to get guaranteed damage. Okay. So I know his attack is four. I'm going to do four damage to her. I'm going to reduce that by her armor value, and that will be the HP damage taken. Okay. Okay? If I do have the resource cards to do a special ability, I might be able to do that as well. The dice come into play. Whenever I do a standard attack, each character has a critical chance. Okay. I roll for a critical chance, and if I get that, my damage is doubled. Okay. And along with the special abilities, too, the dice come into play if there's bonus effects. For example, do a standard attack, and on a 1 to 50, add this status effect. Okay. That's where the dice come into play. It's a little bit of luck in there mixed in with the tactical part as well. Okay, so if someone was to pick up a box, what would they expect to get? So the base game, which is $60, comes with the game board, 147 speaking stone cards, these here, okay. 210 character cards and abilities, 12 of these dashboards because it does support six players. Okay. Okay. 
22 plastic pegs for those fuse abilities I talked about before. Okay. 112 status effect tokens in the felt bag. Okay. 30 translucent colored cubes. A couple okay. pairs of D-Den dice, rule book, and then these reference cards here. Six of them for all the players. Okay. And there's also a premium version that we have of the game. You can see it's got a neoprene mat. It's got some custom dice, alternate art characters, and a broken token deck holder as well. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Okay. And so, since Gen Con's almost over, yep. where can people find this game? So, if you're not a Gen Con right now, we do have a website, thestonemountainsaga.com okay. and skykingdomgames.com. Both of them have this game available now. However, we will be shutting down that store in about a week because we're preparing for the first expansion to this game, okay. which is going to hit on Kickstarter next month. All right. And, and if someone was to back it on Kickstarter, can they get the original game? They can get the original game plus the expansion together. That will be a limited tier. Okay. And then once that's gone, if we hit a certain funding amount, we'll do a second print run of the game as okay. well. Okay. So you guys ran this on Kickstarter previously? Last summer. Last summer. So we funded last July, and it just finished fulfillment, okay. actually. So was there any stretch goals that came with that Kickstarter? There was, and they are all included in the base box, and if you get it again for the expansion, all those exclusives will be there. Okay. Yep. Sweet. Will there be any additional cards? Additional cards for the expansion? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. There's going to be some extras as well. Well, hey, thank you for your time. I Absolutely. appreciate it.